For 2019, I was really excited about many games. The return of DMC, Astral Chain, Oninaki, and... <sighs> Kingdom Hearts 3. But there was one game I was excited for the most. Luigi's Mansion 3. And I'm happy to report that I finished the game twice in the span of a week. Please help. And even uploaded a video on a speed strat I thought would be good for speedrunning. But it turns out there are better and faster strats. Well, there goes my speedrunning career. Oh well, so in no particular order, here are 10 reasons why you should definitely buy Luigi's Mansion 3. Number 10. Luigi's Mansion 3 doesn't require that you play the first two games for you to follow the story. Even though this is the third game in the series, Luigi's Mansion 3 doesn't have an intricate plot that requires you that you have played the original games. There are certain nods and references to the previous game, but these are more akin to fan service rather than missable plot points. The only things you have to know is the fact that Luigi adopted Polter Pop at the end of Luigi's Mansion 2, Dark Moon, and that Luigi met Professor E. Gat back in the first mansion. And apparently, Red Toad knows how to drive. I mean, of course, a go-kart, but a, a full boss? Alright, thank god a one-up success. Number 9. The game controls are taught right from the start without tutorials later in the game. Now, for some people, this is a huge deal, but Luigi's Mansion 3 opens up the first explorable floor with a super quick tutorial that teaches you the basics. And between the first three floors that you visit, which is like 30 minutes from the start of the game, you learn how to do everything. In total, the game has two tutorial sections, unlike another number three game. Ugh. Later in the game, Luigi gets a new ability, but it's only used in designated areas, and it's explained in its entirety the moment you get it. Number 8. The hotel is fully explorable. This was a huge concern for players before the release of the game, because Luigi's Mansion 2 had a mission-based format that didn't allow the player to explore any of the mansions freely, because at the end of every mission, Luigi will be recalled back to EGAT's lab. But in Luigi's Mansion 3, you can explore every floor of the hotel without any problems. You are never recalled back to the lab, you're only called back once or twice in the whole game. Other times, if you need to get to the lab for any reason, like checking the gallery, you have fast travel. And once you're done with that, you can go back exactly where you left off. Number 7. There are tons of secrets and collectibles that reward your curiosity. The Luigi's Mansion franchise is no stranger to secrets and collectibles. Either for having huge amounts of money raining on Luigi or well-hidden gems, Luigi's Mansion 3 has something hiding in every corner. The game features some completion bonuses this time around and a list of achievements that may extend the playtime of dedicated completionists. Number 6. The difficulty gradually increases as you play the game. The Luigi's Mansion franchise is not known to be a difficult one, but in Luigi's Mansion 3, the difficulty may start fairly unassuming, but some floors in and you start to see bosses with more intricate patterns and new ways to interact with the environment. Though I'm pretty sure the 7-year-old me would be capable enough to beat the game, for children or even people that are not experts in video games, I feel this game can be within their reach and have fun with it. If it's raw skill that you're lacking, fear not, for EGAD has some items that can help you out like a gold bone that will revive you if your health drops to zero, a boo finder, and the gem locator, so everything can be within your reach. Number 5. The game can be played completely with another person. The multiplayer component of Luigi's Mansion 3 is flat out amazing. You can play the whole main story with a friend without any problems. In fact, if you enjoyed the game by yourself, I think you will like it even more with a buddy. Number 4. The sound design is f***ing great. Every floor and boss fight has their own music themes. They ramp up or stop depending on Luigi's actions, like sucking up ghosts or walking slowly. This is fun and atmospheric, differentiating one floor from another. Number 3. The combat system is intuitive and allows you to tackle every fight in a different way. At the start, I was kind of worried about the gameplay because I saw that every fight will end up with a new slam combo Luigi has, but midway through, I was strategizing with it, thinking how to slam and weaken tougher enemies with it to clear the room faster, even discovering a way to do it faster, or at least for myself. You can check out this video that I did recently about that specific thing, but I really liked it. But if I had to put the gameplay into words, it would be things like smooth and satisfying. 
because when you clear the room the exact way you wanted, you feel at the top of the world. Number two, the game is oozing with personality. Every single floor is different. They often fall into the regular hotel tropes like the fancy restaurant, a nightclub, a thematic bar, or a super fancy rooms, which look absolutely insane. Every boss fight at the same time is unique. They require some mechanic introduced during the level to be able to defeat them. They start pretty standardly, but later they become more and more original, with patterns and strategies that I've never seen before in a video game. But more importantly, I want you to look at the way Luigi reacts to everything, even the ghosts interact with themselves, it's certainly something that next level games should be awarded for. These guys made Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, and also one of the best Mario Sports titles, being Mario Strikers. Number 1 The animations in the game not only make the game feel more immersive, but also complements the gameplay in some way. The attention to detail next level games placed in Luigi's Mansion 3 is nothing short of heroic. Luigi reacts to everything, and I love it. But something I found they did exceedingly well, aside from referencing their old games, nice touch, was the way these amazing animations complement the gameplay in some way. There are some ghosts you need to track down in order to capture them. Here, the portal ghost will start to shake up and the controller will start to vibrate. If you look closely, you can see the bubbles in Guiji to figure out where exactly the ghost is hiding. One more detail that I loved the most was the fact that when ghosts become invisible, you can see their shadows and catch them by surprise, but you can also see them bumping into stuff while invisible. I love these little details because they made the game much more fun to watch. So, as you can see, I love the game very much, and I highly recommend it to anyone looking for a new experience to play in their Nintendo Switch, regardless of age or expertise in gaming. But I want to know what you guys think. Did you like the game? Are you getting it? Did I convince you to get it? Let me know in the comments below. I want to thank every single one of you for watching this video, but I also want to give special thanks to Rico Dexter, the guy that actually reviewed my video of the speed strat I thought I found for Luigi's Mansion 3. Thank you for responding and I hope you get your world record back. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more of my content and follow my channel, consider subscribing. If for some reason you want to follow me on social media, all my links are in the description below. Once again, thank you all you guys for watching, have a fantastic night and take care.